A cantilever retaining wall needs to be checked for different stability failure modes, including overturning, sliding, and bearing. The correct calculation of the bearing pressures is a very important step because the pressure needs to be compared versus the allowable pressures given in the soils report. But how do you calculate the bearing pressures under a retaining wall? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss the cantilever retaining wall calculation of the soil bearing pressures. Let's get started. In addition to the retained backfill, retaining walls may be subject to surcharge on top of the retained mass. The stem may be also have concentrated loads at the top. When the stem extends above the backfill, the retaining wall may be subject to wind, and uh, if the retaining wall is located in a seismic zone, then the seismic uh, loading is also necessary to be considered. Each applied load has a particular effect in the wall. For example, the backfill exerts a triangular uh, lateral pressure. This is calculated based on the corresponding lateral pressure theory. Uh, surcharge uh, produces a uniform uh, rectangular pressure on the wall. Seismic pressure is uh, trapezoidal with a higher pressure at the top. And um, finally, the wind is uniform over the area where it's applied. On the front of the wall, a passive pressure is produced when the wall pushes against the soil. And finally, under the wall, we have a bearing pressure. This is exactly the type of pressure that we're gonna discuss today, the bearing pressure under the wall. The horizontal pressures on the backfield side will produce an overturning moment with respect to the base of the footing. This overturning moment will be resisted by an opposite resisting moment produced by the vertical forces. These vertical forces include the cell weight and the weight of the backfield and all the vertical uh, loads applied externally. The eccentricity is defined as the location of the vertical resultant with respect to the center of the footing. This is the formula to calculate the eccentricity of the resultant of the vertical forces. When the eccentricity is less than L over 6, where L is uh, the length of the footing, then the pressure is given by this formula. When the eccentricity is larger than L over 6, in other words, when it's outside the middle third of the footing, then the pressure is calculated by this formula instead. When the maximum bearing pressure exceeds uh, the allowable limit, a disturbance in the supporting soil may produce a differential settlement of the structure. Uh, this is a very uh, detrimental uh, effect in any structure. This is an example that I prepared in ASDIP Retain. Here we can see uh, the vertical loads, the resultant vertical and the resultant horizontal. Also the friction force at the bottom, the reaction here, and finally the passive pressure at the front of the wall. So here we can see the calculation of the eccentricity, which is based on the formulas we discussed before. So the eccentricity is 0.61 feet. If we divide the length of the footing, then 67 over 6 is about 1.78. Therefore, the eccentricity is less than L over 6. So the first formula that we discussed is applicable here. The maximum bearing pressure occurs at the end of the toe. So the toe bearing is uh, calculated by this formula with a plus sign. So the final bearing pressure is 2 KSF. If we assume that the allowable pressure is 4 KSF, then we can say that the calculation is acceptable. At the other end, at the end of the hill, the calculation is similar but with a minus sign. So the minimum bearing pressure is 1 KSF. So 2 KSF at this end and 1 KSF on the other end. So both are less than the uh, allowable bearing pressure and is acceptable. In summary, the bearing over pressure is one of the stability failure modes that needs to be checked as part of the design of a cantilever retaining wall. The calculation of the bearing pressures depends on the uh, location of the resultant eccentricity. If it's uh, falling uh, within the middle third of the footing, one formula is uh, applicable. If the resultant is outside the middle third of the footing, then another formula is applicable here. The calculation of the bearing pressures by these formulas is simple enough to be done by hand, but this is just one step in the design of a retaining wall. For a complete design of a cantilever retaining wall, you may need a software like ASDIP Retain to check all the stability failure modes 
and complete the concrete design and optimize the design overall. If you are interested in the software, please visit the website www.asdeepsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. With this, we conclude the presentation on the calculation of the bearing pressures on the cantilever retaining wall. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.